Welcome back to the Morning Drift. My name is Simba Elijah Charles Kiage. The hashtag is the Morning Drift. I am online at Kiage Simba on our Twitter. Let's get talking about a very interesting subject today. And if you look at the gentleman that I'm going to introduce to you shortly, then you will know exactly why this is quite an interesting subject. So the, the reality is that art is a big part of our society. In fact, if you go back, the oldest form of art, if you know your history, could be paintings and drawings. If you were in a high school and you were taught um, the history and, and the, the, the history of uh, mankind, the only way we learn about what they used to do is the cavings that are in existence in caves, is their art, what they used to eat, what they used to move around. Which essentially then, asks the question, in modern day art, how are we supposed to enjoy this art? In fact, more specifically, what questions should we ask artists or the art itself? If you look at our um, topic right there, we've asked that particular question, understanding art. And then we are asking, easy as looking that is the question that uh, we're going to answer this morning. And I want to introduce the first gentleman who's going to join us uh, shortly um, as we wait for our panel to be full. I'm joined by Kenyan Petros. Eugene and Lipat. I got, the, I got the name really nice. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing well. How are you? Fantastic. I can't complain. Mm -hmm. Here's the first question that I want us to ask. It's not every time we see art, I'm in a gallery or I'm online. I see art, a painting itself, a mural. What, what is the first question I'm supposed to ask myself? Like, when I see that painting, what is the first question I need to ask myself as a person who's been presented with this art? I believe that you should just experience it first. Experience it? Yes. Questions might come later on, but the experience is the most important thing to begin with. Because I look at it like a piece of land. Yes. If I give you a piece of land and myself a plot or something, we'll have very different ideas on what we can do with each parcel. Yes. Maybe you can go and build a house to live, or you can build a school to educate. So art, I look at it as a piece of land to begin with. Who knows what you want? Maybe you want to go and rest. Yeah. You want to go and educate people. You want to go and build a hospital, yeah. heal people. So go there, experience it. Because when I come here, it's not the same as going back to my house. This is a different setting, different contexts. So each and every piece of artwork is the same. Context matters, setting, and whatever yeah. motive is mm -hmm. really, really there. Yeah. Yeah. So, Petros, you say experience it. Yes. But you have to know that the best experience comes from something that you truly understand. You have to give me this, that it's not easy to understand art because creativity in art is very, very subjective to the artist. Like, in some sort of form, the artist is the only one who knows exactly what I'm trying to communicate in my own way. Does it mean that also, before I start to experience this art, I have to know the artist, learn the artist. For example, learn Kenyan Petros. And so you see, when Kenyan Petros speaks through art, he speaks like this. Is that what you're saying? In part, but to, in be, part. Mm -hmm. to be very particular, I would say, if you have maybe ugali beef, yeah. what is the difference with having Mindy Choma and sausages on the street? It's the same content. Yeah. So we have to take it for what it is to begin with mm -hmm. because from time to time we dive into the unknown. Yeah. And the unknown, you can't know whether you like the unknown unless you experience it. So you've got to first experience it. You have to experience it yeah. first before you ask questions. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. 
Maybe I should have started this conversation like this, Kenyan Petros. The mind of an artist, it's a complex area. And I want to be very controversial in the sense that every artist has a story in the sense of that what we tend to see in your art could be something that you're struggling with, could essentially be the entire definition of your life. Am I right? Am I wrong? You're on point. Mm -hmm. Because we, we really, really just get experience and inspiration from daily life. Yes. And who knows, maybe this conversation might inspire something. As a, because I've had very subtle things uh, inspire some of my work. Yeah. As, it can be as simple as the way someone says something. Yes. Or what someone says or what someone does. And the environment is practically everything like in the, what is it, Industrial Revolution. Yeah. In Europe, uh, you'll find that some paintings made during that period, they are a bit foggy. Yeah. And it's simply because of smog. The artists saw smog and they were so intrigued at how fazy or hazy it looked. Yeah. And so they did cityscapes with very hazy presentations. Yeah. yeah. Pretty much. So the environment is everything. The environment could be everything. I'm not going to study some art here. And the, because the big question today is, how do we even start valuing art? And I know we've been now joined by one gentleman that I've been wanting to talk to for a very, very long time. Magina Jaff. How are you doing, sir? Go for it. Yeah? yeah? Welcome to the conversation, man. Thank you. Yeah? Mm. I'm, 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 you got lost this morning. We'll laugh about that later on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the thing. Yeah. I, I want us to best this conversation like this, Jeff. Yeah that art is not just a visual expression. It's not like me taking a picture, seeing something beautiful inside there, drawing it, and then I say, this is essentially art. That art comes from a creative point. It's a creation by an artist. Let's, let's begin from that. Uh, I think what, what I can say is, mm -hmm. I'll, do, uh, I'll, I'll do like a, maybe do a quote. Yes. Let me do a quote of, uh, there's an artist called Rodin. Awesome. So he was asked, um, why do you create? Mm -hmm. So he didn't, he, his answer was, I don't create, I see. And because I see, I do what I do. Ah, I see that. You know, I so that. for every artist, everyone has their own way of telling you what they do. So they will call it art, they will call it, you know, you, this thing called art isn't really tangible. You know, it's not something tangible that you can, you know, something that you can see and, and touch. And so this art that you see us create, yep. is, it's just that we are trying to create like something like a portal, you know, something like an, another dimension of this liberty. So we experience pain, joy, yeah. and all these things. Yeah. But we don't, like, we don't, uh, our, our outlet is somehow beautiful, you can say that, because we use color too. Yeah. Yeah. Like Peteros, Peteros uses, he has a very tough medium to work with, but it's funny because we've worked with the medium he has for quite a while. Yeah. When we were all in high school, we used to work with ballpoint. And this guy is crazy in ballpoint. You know, he, his work is, I don't know. I can, I, it, the thing about it is, until you get into this zone, until you get into that dimension, until yeah. you really get to experience what we experience, yeah. you will not see that. Th that's it, isn't it? But you see, whatever you're saying there, Jeff, the, it's the complexity now that comes with the understanding art. But because essentially, there's no yeah. artist. You, you guys have never come out and say, now, you see, this particular piece, yeah. I got it from A, B, C, D. Whatever I'm trying to say is this, this, and this. Yeah. So now, do you like the story to the art? Then you can actually go in and buy this particular art. You see, like for me, even when you, when you, when you talk about the issue of buying art, yeah. it's really not about buying art. Yeah. Like I have these guys work from when we started. Like this is years and years and years. So it's not really about buying art. I think there's that part of investing in art. And that's very economical. But then there's this part where we 
as creators, as they call us, uh, come together and then we, we kind of like, like to see each other in other spaces. So I have Peteros in my house, I have his friends, I have so many people that I've collected over the years. Yeah. So for me, it's not really the act that they do. It's the, his spirit. I have his spirit in my house, you know. So if I look at his face, I don't see that. I see, I look at Peteros. So I look at him when he was starting out this yeah. practice, because yeah. this is like a, uh, what can we call this? This is really not like church, like you get bishop and then CG, what, what, no, this isn't, there's never a hierarchy in art. Yeah. What's there in art is your light. Your light keeps on. Is that it? It's taking you, taking you places, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Your light is the one that shines. Yes. It's really, it's, the art is, it's kind of like your, your what, your medium for your light. Yes. You know. Yes. Yeah. Peter Ross, I'm going to come to you because listening to Jeff right there is essentially just describing you because it is, is interacted with your art. It sort of gets your creative process. It's got a journey into it. So, Jeff, is that what we're saying? That for you to enjoy art, other than just the essence of looking at it, yeah. that you're going to understand the creative process for the artist, for it then to start making meaning to you. Yeah, because you have to interact with the, with the person. Why would you buy something and perhaps you, you don't have any... I say now. You know, you don't... Mm -hmm. Perhaps, let me, let me put it this way. You're going to buy a car. Yeah. You, you know something about Subaru. You know something about Mazda. You know something about Range Rover. You know yeah. their speed. You know yeah. everything. So when you're going to buy it, you, you have a, like somehow like an that's idea. That's it. Uh -huh. You know? Yeah. So for somebody like Peteros, you have to come and interact with him. You know, you just a few interactions like, why do you do what you do? You I know? say that now. Why do you do what you do? Yeah. It's, it's really not to give, it's for him to give you an answer like that. I do what I do because I love. No, <laughs> no. no. He's deeper than Because that. he'll come with yeah. a different approach. Yeah. You know, every artist has their own approach. I've actually interviewed him. That's the funny thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. so I know him. Yeah. I know him like deeply. I know him. Here's the thing. Let's make this interesting. Yeah. When they look at the greatest artists of our time, look at Leonardo da Vinci, they'll say that he was struggling in everything that he was doing, he was struggling to create meaning out of his life. Let me, Petros, what is your story? That I want you to get me into your mind, in this perspective. When you walked into the studio, and by the way, and maybe I should start from there, why have you not slept? Work, really. Work, no, that for you. But also, when, when you get that paint, do you, sense of time? Do you, do you recognize where you are? Because I, I would like to think, I spoke to you yesterday, you were doing something and you've told me that you haven't slept all the way up to now. That means that you are essentially deep right in it up to this morning. Yes. And you came right here. Yes. So could you paint me? When, when you get that brush, when you get that paint, what is going through your mind? How do you see the world? Right now, I'm describing it as sort of having superpowers. Mm -hmm. As dumb as it may sound, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. he gets it. <laughs> he of gets course, it. No, he, gets, it's true. he completely yeah. gets it's it. True. Yeah. So it's as as Jeff said, it's art is something intangible. Yeah. But what an artist can do is he can move that matter, that intangible matter, and he can make it be whatever he wishes it. It can be weighty. It can be light. It can be airy. It can be heavy. Whatever you can imagine, practically your imagination is the limit of your creativity. That's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you zone into that, when you get into that zone, yeah. it's really demanding, but also very satisfying because you get to create a world. It's almost as if whatever you wish will happen at the flick of a finger. Let's say I want to transform all of the air in this studio to become heavy yeah. and dense. Yeah. I'll do so with whatever medium I I'll prefer to use That's because it. I am actually making that mm -hmm. not facade, rather fact happen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. But just before I cross over to Jeff, because you are right on the point now, for people to start understanding what art essentially is, people say, 
that if you study a particular artist, the Jav and Petros, you're going to realize that there's a particular pattern mm -hmm. that this artist follows. Every time they get their paint, every time they get their brush, you follow there's a particular pattern that this artist follows, that regardless of how different their works might be, you're going to recognize a specific pattern that you will say, guys, I've studied this artist, and I know very well that this is Kenyan Petros with this particular art. Is that what now identifying with art means? And if someone want to ask you, uh, Kenyan Petros, what is your pattern? What is, and what inspires your pattern? Because that's where your story begins, isn't it? Yeah. Quite an elaborate question. Uh, I'd say art. I have, to, I, have to, I have to explain this from an interesting perspective. Yeah. The interview Jeff said, I, I remember something I said to him and I remember it because he, he was really intrigued at what I said. Yeah. I don't know why. Yeah. And what I told him was, art is like, it's in the air. You can just reach out and grab it. So that is, that is one aspect. Yeah. And since it is almost as as the atmosphere, as it. everyone can tap into it. Mm -hmm. Anyone can in so many different ways. Yeah. That is where we'll find somebody creating artwork and create somebody else over at a different medium, different field altogether, says the same thing another person said in a different field altogether. Yeah. So it is practically very, very open, but the pattern comes in with how you deliver. It's all personal. It's all in how you've been living your life, how you've been raised. Yeah. My work is super, I can say, clinical or very particular. And when I asked myself, why is it this way? Why is my pattern this mm -hmm. particular yeah. way? Why is it minimal and yeah. very bold? Yeah. I actually started thinking through my childhood and as far back as I can go and said, all the way up mm -hmm. to where I've lived. Yeah. Yeah. And I saw that everything was there. That's it? Yeah. But you can't yeah, I was, yeah, I was you raised can't. in a particular manner that would say, ah, this one will be very particular ah, because I say that now. such and such. I say that now. Yes. The but upbringing and how you, dis how you live your life. Yes. Yeah. Jeff, yeah. same, same question as well. Yeah. When, when you look at your art, and that's what we say that you can't understand the creative process of the artist yeah. until you really know the artist himself. Yeah. Isn't it? When you look at your art, Jeff, when you look at your, the, the art, even the the paint that you're using, the, the, the quality of paint that you're using, the strokes, yeah. the patterns, the depth of your strokes as well and paint. Mm -hmm. Would you say that in some way, someone who understands art will look at you and then say, ah, I sort of understand what this artist is trying to communicate. It's funny how you say strokes. And yeah. after, this is after 12 years in painting is now when I understand strokes. Hold on. Yeah. It's so funny how you say <laughs> Hold it. Hold on. 12 years after painting, that's when yeah. I understand strokes. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, and I can say I've understood strokes in the last um, few months. Yeah. Just few months, literally. Yeah. Because when you're painting, it's the way you said it. You pick up everything from your childhood to the time that you're... Whether so you, you like, not, whether you like not, it or not. You're not, you're not okay, for, for subliminally, yeah. you pick everything. You don't know it but you pick everything. For me, I'm a very messy person when I paint. Yeah. Very messy. I mm -hmm. don't like, I don't like this. I like seeing, <sighs> like, I said no. you know, I said no. for me, it's my creative process. That's what I love. <laughs> hold on, and, hold and on, him, guys, guys. Petro, here's the thing. You didn't come through that one. I was like, it's heavy when you say you're jealous and this, of that. And that's the thing. I'm also <laughs> jealous of how this guy works. <laughs> Because guys, uh, no, we got to come to your level. We got to come we, to your level. <laughs> we, we have this thing. Yeah, yeah. Even we know we have this relationship with these guys for so long. Yeah. And then we we kind of like get together sometimes, As and we we talk and we you know we have whatever. But there's a particular way everybody works. Mm -hmm. And then the funny thing is everybody's envious of everyone yeah. because I like how Peteros works. Very neat. His workstation is very neat, yeah. and you know. We, when you come to my space, books everywhere, paper, <laughs> uh, paint, yeah. like look at my, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. It's, it's really not the appearance of the art, you know. 
you know, it gets deeper than that. It gets deeper than that, it, isn't it's it? Just, it's yeah. just, this is mediums we are using, you know. You can also be a medium of art, Hold you know, on. for yourself. Maybe Hold you on. don't realize this, but yeah, you, that's, you, that's, you, you actually, you're actually doing right now as yeah. we speak. You're performing, you know. This is a performing art. Yeah. You're performing. Look at how eloquent his English is. Exactly. Thank you very much. Uh, guys, HR is listening and in a raise. Anyway, yeah. let's... Let yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you yeah. have to... You ha yeah. This is the thing. Yeah. When you come to my space, are you sure you talk like that? I, I talk like that? No, are you sure you will talk like that? Like, are you sure you will, you will do everything that you do when, you, when you're presented with this? No. Nah. Exactly. Nah. So that's what I'm telling you. When you're given a medium... Okay. So you are the medium in your art. You are the medium. You don't need paint, you don't need... But us... We need paint, we need markers, That's it, isn't you know, it? Yeah, like yeah. for me, uh -huh. I have to work you with work this. You work with that? I, I, knew, I knew very I much have because we were going to work with that. <laughs> I have to, because it's, 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 work. it's who we are. As a, so if I see a space and it needs my spirit, yeah. get right in it, yeah. isn't it? Then so, they, they say we vandalize, yeah. it's fine, yeah, we vandalize, we are, but that's the state, that's the laws. But now in the bigger picture of life, your spirit has to be everywhere. So that you confuse death. You can confuse death. Do you know that? You literally can confuse death. Artist, his work is everywhere. Belgium, where? <laughs> so when the spirit of death comes looking, where will? Do not know exactly where to get him, exactly. isn't it? Yeah. So artists, what we do, we get to near-death experiences when we paint. Yeah. Because Guys, we get to a yeah. zone. Here's the thing, Jeff. I'm never... It's, it's a thing, by the I'm going to confess, that... <clears throat> The way you represent your ideas, and I've watched a lot of interviews of artists really yeah. talking about their work and their life, it's never something that, if you're not listening keenly then, you can comprehend. And I, I spoke to him yesterday for a couple of 15 minutes on phone, sort of trying to get, by the way, I gotta say this on air, he didn't want to come. <laughs> he was like, yo, Sima, the thing is, I've gone to these interviews, I'm gonna ask me how you started, what's your story, I'm not gonna talk about that, because it doesn't... It doesn't speak about me. I've got, no, I've, got no, I've got no easy story. And listening to you guys, it's not that you've got an easy story that I can tap yeah. into, that I have to listen to you carefully just to pick up exactly what it is that you want. Guys, once we come back, I would like to hear your thoughts. We're going to show you a couple of art. And the interpretation is just going to be yours. Because I, wanna, I want us to help our audience understand, like, how then do you start looking at a couple of art pieces that are presented to you, and in your own way, because you guys are from within the industry, so that I see exactly whether the interpretation that our audience will get is exactly how you would also be on it. Guess what? I've got uh, Kenyan Petros. That word, I'm still struggling with it. I say Petros, Petros, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. And uh, Jeff, they're right here with us on the morning brief. We are talking about understanding art. And we ask the question is it basically about just looking? From what it is, uh uh. <laughs> it's not just about looking. You gotta go deeper than that. Once we come back right here at the morning drift, my name is Simba Elijah Charles. Can I get online at Look Up TV across all your social media platforms? Talk to me. I'll be sampling those questions right here on Facebook as well and on Twitter. Once we come back right here with this conversation, guys, this is, I've, I've never been in a place like this. Let's come back so we continue with this conversation. Welcome to Tujenge Home. Your number one show when it comes to all things architecture, real estate, property development, interior design. You get it right here on Tujenge Home. When the food is ready. <laughs> you want to serve them? Dinner is served. <laughs> Let's go! Let's go! Let's get it! Utachagua, 
sura au tabia unapotaka kumchumbia mwanamke. Anaweza kuwa mrembo lakini hana tabia. Naweza jifanya ndio hata kama hapa sitapata nipate kwa kwa tabia. Ukweli wa mambo ni kwamba wanaume wengi hata wale ambao wanatutazama wakati huu ni sura inawavutia mara ya kwanza. Ukiona mwanaume anasema eh ule dem ako poa eh ule dem hafikirii future na huyo dem. Huyo mwenye ako poa anapendeza na kazi zote kwa wacha kutudanganya. Wajue hizo kwa na tabia nzuri lakini ikabadilishwa na hali. Kanisani wanjia ndugu yangu waimba kwaya wakishuka wakipanga masika. Na hawa wa ndugu wa wachupi. Lazima nikae na wewe kwa muda fulani. Nikusome ni kujue kindani sana kuna uchunguzi la aina mbili ndugu yangu na uchunguzi wa polisi na wa CID kama kuna mtu ambaye ana ujuzi wa hali ya juu ya kujifanya ni na kukusoma akili yako mm-hmm. na kukufanya wewe uamini kile unachotaka no. kutoka kwake mm. ni mwanamke like this we still have Kenyan petty wolves or petrols but keep on getting it wrong every time all right I'm gonna get it right and Jeff with us right here on the set so Edgar I will call you out um, I want you to go all the way to some paintings that we called expensive in our running good particularly that one now if you, if you could post it um, right here for our audience to watch Akina Jeff to also actually get to see it thank you very much because I want us to open with this interpretation I would like to hear first from you um, uh, Kenyan Pet Rose on exactly what that is could you give me an interpretation when you're looking at an abstract paint like that how's that yeah they've even known the paint the, the artist what well, imagine I'm in a gallery okay a booked in how do i start to experience that picture could you that that art right there could you could you i will pick your submission or pick uh jeffy's submission as well can can we can we can we go back to it again <laughs> yes thank you no, I'm, I'm collecting the words because okay. there, there's so many ways you actually can look at work because i know i can have an academic approach at it yeah. to begin with i can mm-hmm. have just a free a very horrible what hippie yeah. approach to look at it pick or, one pick one I can, well i'm an artist and, and i have to say that my answers will be very biased <laughs> because i know multiple ways in which i can yeah. look at art yeah but uh this one I, I can usually usually just start off with some academic because it's not so much fun yeah but it's, it's more functional than it is very tangible yeah. and full of experience but it aids yeah this one very simple for me i have to just take time with abstract yeah because i'm not an abstract artist and i would have to really really take time he does eh? yeah uh-huh. pretty much however with the colors i can see is a very interesting pattern yeah yeah but now i'm breaking it down background is a bit darker and then the subtle layers yeah of different forms of strokes so it's there's a lot of depth that I see. Yeah. It's Pollock. It's Pollock. Pretty much. Yeah. Jeff, I want to show you the next one that we got for you as well. So you could also bring me in with your interpretation. Um, Edgar, if you could go to the one that, that will know it directly. That will, if you go to the one that has animals in it, I called it um, uh, probably expensive, uh, around five, six there. So we could um, then uh, have it for Jeff as well, so he could uh, actually show us um, what interpretation he's going to give it. The only attribution that I can give Jeff today is that he's a messy artist. <coughs> like, be look- yes, so something, like, like, something like that now. Can we have it on the big screen so that uh, Jeff can look into it? Something like that. Just let it zoom out completely so we can get to talk about it. There it is. Mm, yeah. Pretty much. When, when we look at a painting like that, Jeff, the, the, what is the interpretation? So, so you see, uh, 
Starting with the previous painting, yeah. Petrius is finding it hard even to, to, to kind of like, you know, articulate. articulate, articulate like to, that, yeah. And that's the thing about even the artist. Because the previous one is Jackson Pollock. Yeah. And he, he's an expressionist. Mm -hmm. So in art, I, I can say maybe in the previous years or as art has been evolving. Yeah. So there have been basically different styles of art. So this one, mm -hmm. this is kind of, it looks to me like a surrealism. Mazen. It looks like a surreal, surreal art, uh -huh. maybe done by somebody like Salvador Dali. Yes. And the artist really works to get you into that space. Uh -huh. Because uh -huh. it's really not uh -huh. to look at it, it's uh -huh. for you to get inside the art. Or to get inside that yeah, art. Yeah, experience uh -huh. the donkey, yeah. experience the color, experience yeah. everything that you can experience in there while your senses are quiet. Because most of us have this, eyes have a second language okay. that you have to really understand. Mm -hmm. And that language is just silence. When you just look without, you just look. There's something that you're literally getting, but you don't know. You don't know it. Mm -hmm. So there's this, the senses have a, a step back that you need to step back and then look at art like that. Yes. Because for me, an art like that looks, looks like somebody who's very into himself. Does it? Very into himself. Mm -hmm. He really doesn't care about you, doesn't care about what people will say about the work. Because when you get into yourself, you really get into yourself. Outside here is just, you, you see shells. And literally, you see shells. Mm -hmm. Because when you start <coughs> seeing people, you start seeing light. Ah. Okay. Not male, female, and whatever. Uh -huh. no. You just start seeing it's light. Just light. It's just simple. You mm -hmm. just start seeing light. So Pretty for much. me, like a picture like that, it's just simply light. Light. Yeah. Because an artist, we, we it's kind of like we are, we just, we want your eyes. We are, we love eyes. Yeah, because it gives you the soul. Because the eyes. Okay, hold on. The eyes. Soul. Eyes gives you the soul. Yeah. Your eyes give you the soul. It's kind of like when, you, if, you, if you've ever had people who have these near-death experiences, they say sometimes when their spirit has come out, it's either they come out through the crown or through the eyes. As a, yeah. I want to show you the next one, um, gentlemen, again. Okay. <clears throat> this one is what we have seen. It's uh, Kipchoge. If you could play, if you could play, if you could, if you could check a, take us to Kipchoge first. Yeah, that particular one. Kipchoge, yeah. Guess what? Bank this, slip. this, and I, th this artist went to the CBD. Cool. If you remember, Long Kenyatta Avenue, yeah. and actually gave us this. Yeah. Let me start with you, Petros. <laughs> First of all, that yeah. is Bank Slave. Yes, Bank Slave. Yes, that's yeah. the artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. cool, yeah. yeah. How you've even seen him? We know him. We know you, him. You know him, yeah. Yeah. and you can attribute that work. So what is what is what is very specific about Bank Slave to that particular uh, art writer? When you, when you see his work, can you pick out things that you will look at that one and say, that's Bank Slave, without even thinking about it? Yes, because I know his handwriting. Ah, fantastic. <laughs> Specific, and, isn't it? It doesn't change. No, it doesn't uh, change. Yeah. Everybody's, it's the way, what Jeffy said, yeah. uh, strokes, or maybe, as you said, also a pattern. Yeah. When I go to create, I'll always use a particular pattern unconsciously. So that is handwriting. Yeah. In regard to what I take, because this is work we have all seen somehow, because yeah. it's in CBD, and the moment I saw it, I just said, ah, that's bank, bank slave. Bank slave. Yeah. And it is simply paying homage to the man. Uh -huh. Yeah, sometimes art is actually as simple as that. Yeah. It's as simple as art. Yeah. Hold on, that sometimes art is just as simple as art. Yeah, yeah but because now it's so powerful that you can imagine how many people know that mm. image. As there. Yeah. So there's power in also, <laughs> there's also that. power in you simplicity. Don't, you don't even have to go very far. Yeah. Now, Jeff, the next one before we continue with this conversation. Yeah. I want to take you to a mural we've seen at Telcom Kenya building along um, is that Haile Selassie Avenue. Yes, Edgar, if you could just um, pull oh, that one as well. Out. Fantastic. That's a week. Oh, that's weak. Oof. Uh, Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, <laughs> like you just see it and you know As immediately. In the thing about it is we, yeah. we, we are in this, you see the art industry, yeah. uh, let's say the art industry, it's kind yeah. of like also so small, and then we know each other. 
We cannot know each other. And you can we, identify behavior. Yeah, we, so in, in that particular mirror, yeah. are, are you going to get, because for me, I got to tell you this, Jeff. Yeah. I looked at it and said, wow, Telcom have decided to make something beautiful. That's really good for you. When you look at it like that, yeah. what do you think was the uh, inspiration behind Vic, just to come with something like that? I, I, you know, I can't really say his inspiration behind it, but the thing about it is, yeah. you know, it gives beauty. Yeah. There's art that gives beauty, and then there's art that does, art has every, the way Peteros has said. Like sometimes the art is art. Yeah, because that is beauty. Yeah. His purpose was to actually give that building beauty. That's it. And then another thing is, they don't, maybe they don't know it, but that building now has another value on it. It does. You know, actually because Vic is a, does, yeah. I know the artist who did that, and yeah. he's a very good artist again. And his hunt, the, just the fact that he's made brush strokes in that building makes that building also, you know, like protected or something. Because that's his spirit there. And the funny thing is, that can do anything to anyone. Somebody can get distracted. Somebody will take images of themselves as the background. So there's so many things that the artist might have. It just depends on the space that you're presented with. Because there are pictures that I can't show you. Perhaps you'll be shocked, you'll be, I don't know what will happen to you, but you can be shocked. But then there's that, I can present that as beauty. Yeah. So art isn't really always beautiful. Yeah. No. Sometimes when you look at the dark side of yourself, that's when you truly know yourself. Yeah. Which touched me. Yeah. We, we run away. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most of us run away. Exactly. We don't we, want to look at that. We actually just trying to run away from. Yeah, we don't want to look <laughs> at that. So most of us artists, yeah. we are. We look into the abyss. Exactly, because we don't care. We don't. This is just a medium. This body is a medium. Yeah. So death, whatever, is nothing to us. We As don't in. feel it. We mm -hmm. don't. Because maybe I have already died in my painting, and, but I'm still here, you know? Yeah. So there's these two aspects in art, the metaphysical and then the physical. Because if you touch on the metaphysical, then you're now doing Then you're art. now doing art. But then if you're just in the physical, looking at the colors and the, you just, you are, maybe you are in the, I don't know, you're still, floating in it. Yeah. Yeah. You still you haven't gotten yes. down to it. Pretty much. Uh, and, and I don't know whether Edgar can pick uh, some of the art that we got. The, the artists who, and this is something that we've seen repeating itself yeah. in majority of um, famous art, what we're seeing ghosts in art. Um, I want to start with you as well, because we're helping our audience start to appreciate that art as well. But when we see Edgar, I think you can pick it as well. Just look at it and then pull it up. Good. When we are seeing ghosts in art, yeah. it's a repetitive sequence for majority of artists where you have this color immersion, where you have a lot of colors, yeah. then in that, in that painting, you can actually make this is a ghost. Uh, what, is the, what is the interpretation that as somebody who wants to get into art and start appreciating art, how do I look at that? You see... You see, when you, when you do something, yeah. it's like when this world was being created, yeah. it was like, ah, there's a cow, ah, there's a hen, ah, there's an alligator, there's yeah. a, you know. Yeah. So I, I guess the, the creator was surprised when he saw, because life is inevitable. It uh -huh. had to happen, mm -hmm. you know, because mm -hmm. there was space, there was air, there was water. So life was inevitable. As it just had to happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's the same thing yeah. when you come to art when you start taking the colors. Like, look at us, we are, we are both dark. Because why we don't, I don't wear any color. I don't wear any color. Is it something synonymous with because majority of artists? I've ever gotten attacked because of a color I've worn. Huh. And maybe, maybe somebody would not understand it, but Ukundani, yeah. like you get some stupid attacks when you, when you get to another level of painting and... That, that was my... It's a good thing you're touching on it. <laughs> Jeff, I'm, I'm even afraid to ask this question, but I'm, I'm going to ask no, you. Ask it. Ask I'm going I'm to ask you. Ask because it. I started asking you when it was a bit no, ask just it. general. Jeff, that for, for you to become a proper artist, and you see what he said, that we're looking into their base. Yeah. 
that you sort of step out of the normal. Yeah. That we've seen a lot of movies where best artists are guys, for lack of a better word, who've gone crazy. I'm going to ask you that question now. Yeah. Jeff, would you consider yourself crazy? Yeah. You are crazy. Yeah. But really? sometimes, sometimes people will look at you and say, what's wrong with this one? Uh, I, I would say crazy in, uh, not crazy in the, in the sense of this world, yeah. but crazy in the sense of um, how I approach things. As a, you know, I don't approach things the orthodox way, like just the normal way. My approach to problems, to everything is different. And it's only because I think I've, I've delved inside myself so much that I know I don't know anything. And then I know, I know something about color that I'm still trying to understand it. Yeah, yeah. And then I'm trying to understand uh, why is it that I love color when I see it, in, when I see color in spaces, when I see people doing what I'm doing. Yeah. But then there's this part that most people will not understand. Because you, you are a medium when you come to being an artist. You are a medium. Literally, everything in this studio was drawn before it came into fruition. Okay. This, everything in here mm -hmm. was practically drawn yeah. before. We're actually sitting on a drawing, you know. So for us, you would say this is furniture, but for us, this is a drawing. We're just sitting on a drawing. But this is a drawing that has been brought into fruition. Yeah. So you have to delve into yourself, and then you have to un really, really understand who's in there. You really have to know. You really have to know. Yeah. What's that? Peter Ross? To add on this point. Yeah, yeah, I actually, I actually want you to add on it. A yeah. friend of mine once told me, he's a musician. Yeah. He just came up to me and told me a very random, and a friend told me a random fact. He said, have you listened to Ama Piano? Imagine the producer, what's going on in his mind is, do 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 so now that's that craziness. That's it. He's just embraced it and he's transcribed it to music. Music. Yes. That's it. Yeah. So it's living on the edge. It's the same way I look at the studio and I yeah. see there's a certain periphery. There's a periphery between the lit area and the yes. dark area. It's yeah. very intriguing to me. Yeah. So now what artists do is go into that darkness. Source that darkness. Yeah. Go into it. Go find out what's in there. Do, do you know what I find crazy is that I spoke to you yesterday around 4 p.m. and you said there's something you're doing. Then you're walking up this morning telling me, guys, I've, I've, not, I've, not, I've not slept, so I'm still at it. Is that you're crazy? That once, that once it triggers you, there's no coming out of it. Like it has to come out. And I'm going to put this question like this. In a normal day, because it's a creative process, in a normal day, do you find yourself letting go what is normal? In the sense of, guys were having a conversation, and then, Jeff, you're lost. You've seen it, and you want to put it down. Has somebody ever told you, wait, Bwana, Ebu took your place, Uko, like, wait, Uko, Apa? Yeah, last week. Last week, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I'm even working. I'm still trying to understand how this life is working. <laughs> put it in my art. Whoa. Yeah. Like That's, somebody just wakes you up, tells you, we're here. Yeah, because literally, because when you tap into art, yeah. it's almost as if you live two worlds. A world where you can do whatever you wish. And then there's a physical world where you have to be functional, where I know if I stay beyond uh, midnight, I won't get any shops open. Yeah. However, I can create at any time I wish. So there are two called, worlds we live. There's something called tradition that we have. Tradition is there's breakfast, lunch, supper. Yeah. So somebody knows I have to eat breakfast, lunch, supper. For me, I eat when I'm hungry. So I don't have that. I don't have, and I sleep when I am sleepy. Same way he's saying. We don't have traditions. It's not that. It's never there. It's not that. It's not never take away from the tradition because we understand the functionality of it. Of all. tradition. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because hey, if, if I don't have, if, I, if the traditions are not there, yeah. I will not get a matatu. I don't get an Uber, True. I don't Azar. Azar. get to the mama and get yeah. my groceries. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the traditions have to be there. Yes. But there has to be someone on that periphery near the darkness. Yeah. Yes. yes, pretty much. 
Guys, wait, I'm, I'm getting told we have four minutes. I gotta ask this question, and you be quick at it. Mm -hmm. um, but the, so some of the questions that um, I've come through, those are the ones that I'm going to look at right now. And I do know some of them that came in actually yesterday. When I was, and this is a personal question yeah. from my brother. Job, thank you very much for watching, and I know you're watching today. So I did, I'm going to ask him this. This is what he said. That modernity in the industry, now you can create paints, painting in computers. You can create, you can actually draw on computers. Yeah. The softwares have been created around that. Do you think it's taking away from what art essentially should be traditional, physical, I can touch it, that somebody actually went with paint and did this, right? Is it taking away from it or it's adding to it? See, I think art has had so many evolutions over the millennia, over it, the years. Yeah. And what's that is just another evolution. So there are artists who will have the spirit to use that oh, technology mm -hmm. and really create works of art, oh, you know. Mm -hmm. And then there are artists who are very traditional, who just rely on paint and rely on, on actually just natural media to present their work, oh, you know. Mm -hmm. So if a kid was born right now and he would never experience a paintbrush, he would first experience a tab, he will find somehow to get his soul inside there and create a work of art inside there. You understand? Yeah. The same way I can pick up a brush, my spirit gets into that brush. And then once I lay it on the, on the surface, the spirit gets into that surface. So there's that just channeling of your spirit into that media. That's it. It's just simple. It's simple it doesn't answer. really mm -hmm. take you, it doesn't make you special or make you any, any, I don't know how to say it, but so long as you're spreading your spirit out, so long as your spirit is out there, yeah. you're good. You're good. I will, I will F 15 say, seconds if you can. It's um, simply a tool. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a like, tool. Yeah. In, like in, before the 1600s, this my art history serves me right. Yeah. Proportions of the human bodies were off until some <laughs> an artist discovered, a, what is it, a lens. Yeah. And so put a lens between canvas and whatever he or she wanted to draw or paint and got the proportions right. right. Yeah. What is the difference with that lens and maybe chat GPT right now? Wait, there's yeah. none. There's, there's none. none. Because yeah. a few years ago, people were like, oh, oh NFTs, NFTs. Yeah. Right now, it's not as... It's not as heavy, yeah. isn't it? The same way we'll still have the mon people crowd to see the Mona Lisa today and it's was painted in 1500 yeah Whew. guys it's when i say that i don't want this conversation to end i actually don't want it to end because i've got mm -hmm. so many personal questions here's the thing guys yeah if i get and i'm gonna say that right here when you say if i get 200 likes on this particular video and i'm gonna promote it <laughs> after this interview this conversation has to continue exactly two weeks from now I'm saying that because I know what's going to happen within this one week. And when am I going to have <laughs> Jeff and uh, Kenya Peteros back? Yes, what? So make it happen. Give it 200 likes. Give me 10 comments out of it, specifically questions on it. And guess what? I'll call them back so we can continue with this conversation. We ask them, understanding art as easy as looking, turns out, uh-uh, there's deeper that you need to actually get into if you're going to enjoy this aspect of art. I've never had, but this is true, never had a show like this on The Morning Drift. It's one of those that I've got personal questions around it. And my chance is that you're going to find me in an art gallery. <laughs> Just looking at uh, art and trying to understand it. Gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. All right? Jeff, now you know. This is, that, that's your door as well, Bana. Anytime. So, utakwa tuwa pa simba. Tunakuja. All right, we take a tiny breather right here on uh, The Morning Drift. Once we come back, Ian Ketani and I will be stepping away from the world of art into the world of what is trending and what we have for you today on our Newsroom Diary. Thank you very much for watching. See you shortly.
Aman, a symbol of strength, power.